headquarters and denouncing the Rochester, New York Police Department and this grand injustice that has been committed against a young man who had some problems and what he needed was someone to give him the help that he needed. He did not need it to be pumped full of bullets and pumped full of lead by the trigger-happy Rochester, New York Police Department last Thursday at 7.30 in the morning when he was executed by seven cops. Seven. The equivalent of a firing squad. Justice for Izzy. 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 morning, I was sitting on the porch with my wife waiting for her to go to work. I see two police cars coming down the street. I get off the porch, come on the sidewalk, and notice that they stopped at Izzy's mom's house. After I, they, I noticed that they went to Izzy's mom's house, I noticed Izzy coming down the street with a gun. This gold car right here was parked in front of this tree. He got in front of the gold car. He cocked the gun back, pulled the trigger, nothing happened. Why do they get away with this? Why would they kill a child? He was a child. Right? How would you feel if that was your child? This is my nephew right here. What, what happened to him? He lives right freaking there. Let's talk about this man did not have to die like this. Let's talk about this man did not. He did not. He did not. On the cars with their arm, their guns out. Tell him to drop the gun. He ignores them. He walks around the corner. They follow him, guns strong. He ends up in a Emerson Market parking lot. The police had him surrounded. He was in a squatting position like this with the gun in his lap. Hands off the gun. Hit him, hitting himself in the head like this. The police had him surrounded. They had plenty of chance to take him alive at the, at the Emerson Market. We have the videotape though. I want to see it. You know, I want, I want, I want everybody to know what exactly they did. You know, that led up to the event from Emerson Market. Do what you know is right. You know, don't do what you need to do to cover your ass. But they let him get up. He pushed the gun on his shoulder. They let him walk around the corner back to Locust Street. This first pole over here, this first wooden pole, is where they tried to tase him. They missed him. He walks down here. He turns around. He lifts the front door. They fly the officer. They shoot him dead. He falls here. And as you can see, there's one of the holes all over the place. We were next door neighbors for about seven years. Oh, the justice will be served. We're here to protect the service. I just give my respects to the family and the friends, and we're not going to stop this until justice is served. The chief of police never showed up here on the scene. I asked, I asked him if I could speak to the chief of police. They said the captain was coming. I didn't want to speak to the captain. This, this, this young man was murdered. I never, but we're gonna, we're having, we're supposed to be getting a meeting with the chief of police. Um, I brought, we brought the whole community on Locust Street together to help this young man. I feel that everybody in this community feels that this young man was murdered. He should have been taken alive in Emerson Market. I want, I want these seven officers that use my best friend as a target. You know what I'm saying? I want them to go to jail. 
the owner of Emerson Market, I spoke to him. He said he seen the video before the police picked it up. He said, quote, that the police had two to three chances on taking him alive, unquote. We came over here, I decided to get everybody together, put jugs in the barbershop, the stores, and have a have a rally over here, cook some food, see if we can sell some food so we can get, help Izzy get a headstone or help, at least help pay for his food. All the communities coming together. This is this is really wrong. This young man laid there for over an hour, over an hour, and I came out with a sheet. But before I came out with the sheet, when I did come out creeping to see who they was, the police told me to go back. That the children from the neighborhood, the elementary, now you had your high schoolers already in school. You had your, your middle schoolers in school. But we had our babies still left in the neighborhood, okay? And these children were starting to come out to get their buses. And I had to yell at them to get back in so they don't see what was already, you know, what I saw. But they already saw it. They saw it because the fact is they would not let me cover it, but he laid for an hour in the street and would not take my sheet to put it because they said that's protocol. He died just like his father died. The police killed his father also. This is his a picture of his father right here. This is a picture of Izzy when he was younger. Him and his father died the same way. Death by officers. He was playful. Every time you saw him, he was joking around. You know, when my son was doing right, he made sure he put him straight and they came to him. You know, he, he, helped, he made sure that the other kids around were doing right. You know? So it's not like, you know, he was walking around, he wasn't one of the kids that I was like, I don't want you hanging out with him, you know? So to hear that, it, 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 it hits you in the heart. This young man did not deserve to die. I understand that he had, bi he was bipolar, and I, I feel, and a bunch of people around here feel that he had enough pain, he had enough hurt. He decided to take his life. I think he wanted to die because he wanted to be with his father. He wanted, he was looking for love from all of us. We helped this young man. He hung out with us every day. And this is unfair. He died by, uh, uh, he died by a, a, a how, you, how should I say this? Um, a, a firing squad. That's exactly how it was, a firing squad. It's, it's, it's not fair to him. It's not fair to the rest of us. We lost a good friend. I, I just, uh, I heard this morning on the news, uh, this young man had bipolar, and my heart sank because I have bipolar. I've been through what this guy goes through, and that's a living hell inside when I don't take my medicine. I, I took my medicine this morning, I read out of the Bible. I try to read a psalm a day. Today it was 124. I feel bad because people joke at, at, at people like me. All right, I'll be the face for this young man right here. You know what I mean? All he needed was a little talking to. Say right, y'all. Say it, um, I've never seen a death in Rochester make some of the hardest individuals or the so society's so-called hardest individuals bring them to tears bring them to uh, emotions and empathy now this man he died we seen bucky williams kill cops and he had the pleasure to make it to prison to fight a charge we seen guys shoot at the cops they had the, the opportunity to go to jail or be judged by a jury of peers. This young man, from what they say on the street, he didn't do something, he didn't offend his mother that, to that point. He didn't shoot a shot in the air, but they didn't even give him the pleasure to be judged by a jury of his peers. They didn't give him the pleasure of going to jail. 
or getting some help because from what we hear you know what i mean he asks for help you know what i mean and uh we have a lot of people out here with mental health issues mm -hmm. our whole community has mental health yeah. issues okay but rochester has to pay attention to those issues and people like that uh should be uh we go to the shooting ranges all the time we train to shoot people in the leg we train to taser we train, we train for conflict right resolution here. right here but in the why chest. this man had to be killed down on the street and now look at the people this kid would get, I get up every morning at six o'clock. This kid is sitting on a porch, on his friend's porch, waiting for somebody to get up so he can hang out with them, so he can be loved, so he can share love with us. And it's not fair. His mom's at home. And that's another thing, the, the newspapers, the TVs were lying. He never stabbed his mother. He never cut his, her throat. He pushed his mother and his mother hit hit his, hit the chair and cut her head open by the chair. He apologized to his mother before he left the house, called the police. Yes, he did. He probably did tell the police that he stabbed his mother and that, you know, he's going outside to hurt other people. But that's not Izzy. He didn't have his medication. His mother was trying to get make him take his medication. I learned firsthand that the RPD will lie. He'll stand as a huge group of 100 officers and go on national television and tell lies. They, they in a press conference, told bold lies that did not happen, that I have witnesses, that I know personally did not happen. They told these lies. They were not misunderstandings. They were lies. And these, these are the police representatives this is what they do, this is a systemic problem. So, looking at what happened here, I know that we all have a lot of questions. It doesn't seem to make sense, it doesn't add up, and while the media might carry some of the points that the police folks people make, I do not trust what they say one bit. We know that they lie. We know that they lie. We need an independent investigation and we need truth. This is what I never want you guys to forget whenever you see a blue and white on the streets of Rochester. Never forget that as his body lay cold here, a police officer from the RPD slapped him in his face and then said, yeah, he's dead and laughed. Unfortunately, this happened. And like I said, I feel and a bunch of us feel that he just wanted, he was just looking for love. He was just looking for somebody to care about him. Somebody to, to be there for him. And now that he's gone, it took a whole community to come together to be there for him.